you can see how much you can create in quite a short space of time. A big hello to you. Welcome back to the channel. And of course, I'm joined today with Les hello. Cliff, and you recognise him, from all of the other projects that we've done together, TV and otherwise. And it's really great to have you along. And today, what are we going to be doing? Well, you've already seen this in front of us. This is a leftover from a TV series that I did a year or so ago. And what we're wanting to do is to recycle it into a new layout. And I thought that this was a great opportunity to show you just how you can use things that you're going to throw away to make some really great scenery. And what I mean by this is things like polystyrene packaging, old uh, scrunched up paper that a lot of things come from mail order with today is, is packaging in the box. And we're going to show you how to turn all this into really some quite fabulous scenery. And I've got Les here because he really is a dab hand at this and he's gonna show us just how easy this comes together and um, just how anybody can take on the challenge and create something magical from stuff that was otherwise destined for landfill. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Support also comes from TMC, the Model Centre. Check out their comprehensive and fully stocked website at themodelcentre.com. For project ideas, why not look at their airbrush offers at the link in the description and have a go at creating your own weathering and graffiti masterpieces. It couldn't be simpler. So we're starting out here, we've got a layout that I just happen to have to hand and it doesn't matter about this being scenic, actually you could be starting with a fresh baseboard, it really doesn't matter. But talk us through this technique. I, I think it's amazing that you can just use things you were going to throw away that are at zero cost to you. So we're going to start with polystyrene. Yeah, we're going to try and make increase the height of this hill a little bit. Like Jen said, we could be starting just from a flat base and building it up. And uh, some scrunched up yeah, paper as well. Got some plenty of uh, the brown to the paper, or in this case it's grey, and some of this webbing kind of packaging yeah, that's yeah. coming in nowadays. Which so this is, is just, just what yeah. you would get um, mail order, that, and this would go straight in, in yeah. the uh, So that bin. with um, just some ordinary water to soak the paper in and make like a, a spongy kind of mod podge building material squeeze out most of the water and then this is quite pliable so you can make shapes with it. Yeah. But ideally to begin with we just need to make some kind of structure on here. So we just build it up, it up. And, and that really is just the inside of it and it doesn't really matter about what these are going to look well, like. I mean we can literally just force them in, force that into build there, it up which we've got at the moment and that's brilliant. And then taking other bits breaking it down and just building round to create a shape that, you, that you're quite happy with. Do we need to glue any of this? You can glue some of it with um, PVA and things like that just to help but initially. If, if, we, if we're going to add PVA in with the water, well, yeah, that's, that will help, that will to, help bond to bond all this together. Place. So okay. that's brilliant. So we're going to crack on now and build up this structure and then we're going to come back and see just how it comes together. We're at a stage now where Les has built up the scenery and we're starting to put in a suggestion of features that we want on the finished model. So we've got a little gorge coming in here and you've also broken up some of the polystyrene into the just like little chunks. And this is a technique I've seen you do before where you make rocks out in the feature them. out yeah. of it. And it's a really great and simple technique. So. Um, what exactly do you do to turn these well, into little rocky outcrops? What I will be doing with some of them is taking your plaster of 
um, bandages. So this is just ordinary plaster bandage yeah. that you can buy in a hobby store. In the hobby store, um, online or whatever. Uh -huh. And making sort of modular rocks out of them. Put that just so to one side. So you're just really coating them in With plaster. The, the plaster so they become hard and they take away some of this bubbly effect. Although even that on its own can be quite effective as a yeah, texture. Yeah, because there are rocks where that is yeah. actually quite a good texture. And that also then means that that takes paint really, really yes. well. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do here is just to make an idea of a little gully with yeah, some yeah. rocks coming down. The waterfall is going to be starting up here somehow. So there'll just be like a, a stream. little pool. Yeah. Might be an underground um, stream that's come up and you know a swallow hole that started to And open who up. doesn't like a water feature on their yeah. layout? I want to have a few areas where the water might settle and then come down again. Yeah, we put some more of this paper. And it's all about adding a bit of interest yeah. into your water feature. Yeah. And I always find them really great fun to build. Again, with the scrunched up newspaper, is making sort of some features in here where the water might be able to cascade over. And we can put more um, paper or even some of the rocks that we're making from the polystyrene that's been covered with bandages. And so all you do is you break up your polystyrene into odd shapes Give it a bit of a covering with just one piece of plaster bandage. What I tend to do is to cut these into two inch by six inch strips. I find that's quite a good uh, workable size yeah, yeah. and these will eventually dry off and then they can all be placed in position and then once we start adding in the other right. plaster Paris bandage over that. So they just get worked in. Work, they get sucked well, in. Yeah. Right, so we'll have more sort of dotted around, maybe a few more up here to give a little bit more sort of height to the to the feature okay. and that's it basically we've got a, that was so simple and that's taken ten us minutes. maybe 10 minutes yes. and really this is this is probably the most expensive part of it buying plaster bandage but there are other methods that you can use if you're on a really really tight budget you can use some of the cloths that are sold for cleaning they're Clean really sold, really yeah. cheap and what you can do with these is actually soak them in PVA, which again is another product that is quite cheap. And if you soak those in the PVA, then they act a lot like the plaster bandage does, but at a fraction of the price. And the only thing that you're going to need is it takes longer to set. Yeah. But time is free for your hobby. What we're doing here is just taking the plaster bandage and working that in over that rough structure that we put together. And this is where it comes alive. And what I like about doing this stage, and it's something that Les is very much a master of, it's kind of those happy accidents. You don't need a lot of artistic flair here. It's about kind of getting a sense of what shapes it's naturally forming into and making that work for you. And um, it's one of the really fun parts of the hobby, just kind of seeing that scenery come to life under your fingertips. And you don't need a lot of skill. There's no super secret way of doing this that you need to follow. It really is a case of just trying it out for yourself, and seeing how it falls. It's always good to try and um, use the brush that you're using to um, fix the bandages in place to actually um, cover up a lot of the, the little uh, air holes that appear. So, you know, the plaster will still push around and you've got less of that sort of aerated finish to it. Yeah, it's kind of, the, the plaster bandage looks like it's got quite a few little holes. And what you're doing is if you smooth the plaster over those, it does build up the strength of the, the plaster in the finished product. The shell's gone on really, really well, and you can see that the mountain has, has started to come to life out of that pile of what was just junk. And uh, it's still a bit of a, a white wasteland, but you've got a selection here of different watercolour-based paints. Yeah, just a black, um, an ochre, a brown, and an olive green of some description. And we've got a, a light ochre one there as well, a little bit left. A little bit. And these, um, they're kind of like a rocky, earthy yeah. colour set. I'm going to do a, a stippling effect, what they call leopard spotting. So it's a very watery effect. And I do tend to work while things are still wet because I like the way that it soaks yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Um, because you can always go back and build up extra colour afterwards. But it's nice to get rid of that white, a bit like an oil painting, get rid of the white, block in all the, the different colours, and then you start to see 
a real landscape start to pop in front of you. And the other thing as well is those rocks that we talked about before that you were wrapping the polystyrene in the plaster bandage, this actually turns them into something that really does look like rocks. And I just love this effect. So I'm, I'm gonna sit back and watch you work here. I've seen you do this before and it's always really magic to watch because the, again, there's no specific skill required for this. It really is just a case of washing the different colours over and the rocks almost leap out on their own. All I'm doing here is using some of the, the colour from these watercolours, neat, um, to help to fill in and blend different colours on the rocks. And also it, it helps to fill in some of the, the holes that are in the plaster. A lot of this will get covered with scenic scatter, um, static grass and things like that. And then what we then will do is to brush back to re reveal some of the rock face again. And I've, I've just kept with the same sort of basic three colours. I've added a little bit of white into it, but mm -hmm. basically it's a brown, an ochre yellow, um, and a black, and a little bit of white. The colours have come together. We've got that suggestion of rocks. You can clearly see the gully where the water feature is going to go in. What we're going to do now is start put on the grass. And this is something that you've seen me do over and over again. But it's really, really easy. And we're going to use a War World Scenic Static Grass Applicator and an assortment of different colours of static grass. But the first thing we need to do before we can get them to adhere to the model is build up a layer of the basing glue and then we've got something for that to stick to. I'm going to charge the hopper with some of the static grass. I'm going to choose a couple of different colours, different fibre lengths and different textures as well. And it really makes it much more natural. The real world around you has a lot of varieties of different colours and textures. And just remember that the eye sees texture as much as it sees colour. And then what I do with this is mix it a little bit, but not too much. You don't want it to be totally evenly mixed. And the grill goes on. Just ground this by holding it, and then very, very quickly, you can see the static grass come alive. Once we've got the first pass on, we're going to get the layering spray and we're going to just spray just on the area that we've been doing and we can start to build up a real depth to that grass. Where some of the grass may have stuck that we don't want it, we can wipe it back to reveal the rocks underneath. If we want to put some more bushes and things on there as we move forward, we can do that. We can also add some more paint colour into there to highlight anything. You can even start to mix other things in like um, polyfiller, tile grout and things like that to give a little bit more definition here and there. But generally speaking, that's now looking like the rocks are pushing through sort of the, the grass that's there and maybe even one or two areas. Just on the top, you can remove some of the grass to reveal bit of the rock underneath. The next stage is really where the magic comes alive I think with the static grass application and that's getting some of this scatter in place and I've chosen again from the War World Scenics range a range of their very fine scatters and you don't need a huge amount of these again we just blast over we've already done a little bit with the layering spray and just kind of get a texture going on. So I really like the really fine stuff and what we're going to do with this is just sprinkle on occasional places. We add a little more in. You could imagine there's some plants here. They're finding the nooks and crannies. And just really colonising this hillside. We're then going to give it another blast over with the layering spray. And I've got a different colour green now. This is a much coarser green. And again, it's texture and it's colour. Texture and colour, really, really important. If you wanted to put flowers into this hillside, 
This is where you would do them. And remember, less is more. A little bit of really fine red. I've got a small packet here. Not too much. This is really subtle. You're not seeing the individual bits. You're seeing the suggestion of something, plants, wildlife, nature. And if we need to tone this down, it's another layer of the static grass layering spray. And then we just very quickly have a very, very light application of grass. If you want to mute any of these colors down, a light application doesn't need a lot. And that just mutes some of those colors down. It's all it's going to need. And then to fix it all at the end, quick blast and you're done. The grass has really come together well. And as Les has just cleaned off little bits of those rock face, it looks great as those rocks just peep through that grass layer. So what we're gonna to turn to now is the water feature. And we're gonna need some kind of gravel in there just to build up around the base of the rocks. And I'm gonna do this quite simply and quickly. Again, I'm gonna use the basing glue that we used for the static grass. And I'm just gonna run that down anywhere where I'm gonna have the gravel. And then using a teaspoon, I'm just gonna carefully deposit small amounts of real gravel into the crevices and that will set and give us a great base for when we add the water feature. I'm really pleased, Les, actually, yes. with how this has come out. And all together, all these different techniques, they're really quite simple. And we've taken what amounts to just trash, things you're going to throw away, yeah. and we've turned it into... An artistic way. form. Really, really bad. There's, no, there's nothing um, store-bought apart from the static grass, really. Everything that you see here, the rocks uh, and, and the terrain, is just out of waste materials. And I think what we need to do now, just to round this off, is some trees. Good idea. So what I've done is I've put together some quick and easy trees, and these are from the War World Scenics range, and they do some really great kits. Uh, I've just thrown these together, it's taken literally five minutes, and we've chosen to go for an, an autumnal, autumnal feel. Yeah. So uh, we do have a forthcoming video, so we'll show you exactly how to get this same effect in an upcoming video, so do stay tuned for that. But now what we're going to do is we're going to find some places to plant them and just blend them into the landscape, have a suggestion of dropped foliage underneath. And I'm guessing just around the bottom oh, here, there, yeah. where they get more yeah. water, the soil's a bit deeper, <coughs> and it just gives that lovely focal point. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we're just up on the moors, we've got something else yeah. going on. And the first things first that we want is just a sense of that dropped foliage underneath. And this is easier to do before the tree actually goes into place. So first of all, we've got the small one. We're gonna put it in here somewhere. And then because we're gonna have those autumnal colors, we've got the yellow and just spread them out over a wider area. But we're also, we're gonna just make sure that that builds up in the area in the center where the tree's going. And then a little bit of the red muting down that yellow. And you can see there, you can see it turning autumnal. Another quick spray. And that just fastens all that down in place. And we're gonna take the first of our trees. And we're gonna make a hole. It's gonna go in right there. So just push our way in and we just put a little blob of glue in the hole and then pick the orientation of your tree. You'll have a side that looks better, that favours the viewer. And that's the side you want to make sure is going to get the most attention. And then we just push it into the hole. And there you have the first of the trees in place. We've got that sense of the fallen foliage on the ground around it that really makes this blend in, it makes the tree look like it's meant to be there because otherwise it would look odd and out of place but that dropped foliage blends it all in. The layout really came together well and you can see all of these simple techniques combine to make something that actually didn't cost an awful lot. 
and it hasn't taken us that long to build it either. And you get a great effect. The plaster cloth with that scrap polystyrene just really does make a great rocky scene. And I, I've really enjoyed this lesson. I've enjoyed doing it, yes, I am. And I always love working with you. Thank you very much for the invite. So it's, uh, I always say it's like the Bob Ross of model <laughs> railways, and you can see the results uh, right here in front of you. But I hope that this video has inspired you to maybe have a go yourself because you don't need some kind of amazing skill that takes years of Zen Ninja training to do get to. You just have to have confidence that That's you too... Confidence. Absolutely. Confidence is the only skill that you need. Believe in yourself. Don't forget as well to please share the video and let others know about this great little project. And uh, tickle that like button too. It loves being tickled. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, do please consider doing that. And don't forget as well that the exclusive Monday Club Wagon is still available to order at the link down below. This is a high quality model from KR Models and is sure to be in high demand. And you can order with confidence through Rails of Sheffield. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk. And me, Les Cliff saying happy modeling and until next time bye for now take care today's video comes in association with trainomatic makers of dcc decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk support also comes from tmc the model center check out their comprehensive and fully stocked website at themodelcenter.com for project ideas, why not look at their airbrush offers at the link in the description and have a go at creating your own weathering and graffiti masterpieces. It couldn't be simpler. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papair, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, and Jennifer Garrett, thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.